QRS here in St. Louis. Good morning. Good to be with you. So explain to us what is going on. It seems to be a war of words around the world. How should we interpret all of this? Well, it's better of war of words than actual war, so you should interpret it just like that. Uh, we want to ensure in our words of war, word of war, words of war, uh, the president and, and Secretary Mattis have made it clear to not only the government of North Korea, but to uh, other countries that can help influence them, be it China or Russia, that we have the capabilities to deal with any of the contingencies they may pose. And while we don't want conflict, uh, we want to ensure that the threat they pose is dissipated and does not continue to grow. Uh, and threatening to attack Guam, launching missiles that can reach Japan, uh, South Korea, Hawaii, are an escalation of that threat and a demonstration of the capabilities. And as you well know, in our history, we've never tolerated that. So this recent skirmish, uh, North Korea has been uh, known to sort of test the incoming president from either party over the last number of decades. How much of this is just saber rattling this this little boy king in North Korea is bored, but ultimately he knows that if he does anything or crosses a line, there is a point of no return. I, I would agree with that. And I think the point of return is demonstrating a proven capability to deliver a nuclear armed weapon through an intercontinental ballistic missile to the uh, United States, be it Hawaii or continental uh, United States. And so uh, that would force us to take some sort of action. We have not been able to live under those conditions. If you remember the Cuban missile when the Russians wanted to put those those systems into Cuba, we were willing to go to war with it. When we thought uh, Iraq had weapons of mass destruction, we were willing to go with war to war on that. Uh, so that's the difference. And and again, this messaging. Uh, I can't reinforce enough. It's not only to North Korea, but it's to those other nations that can help us influence North Korea uh, to choose another path uh, to go down that provides stability and security in the region uh, where they cannot live under this persistent threat. Admiral, take us through uh, the, the different types of conversation that Rex Tillerson is having, our, our Secretary of State, with the public and President Trump's uh, power and fury comments. As an admiral, what do you think when you hear those two types of comments? Well, well two things. The president wants to ensure they understand uh, the military might we have, our ability to pr strike them with precision weapons of any type and decimate them. I think the secretary of, Def of state, Secretary Tillotson, then leverages that to uh, help utilize and reinforce the political uh, paths we can go down and the policy paths we can do that and the course of action to to draw a, a a policy solution here that prevents conflict so both of them have uh, different roles but they both mutually support each other in meeting our overall objectives and not to mention those of our allies in the region admiral how worried are you that this will escalate into some type of military action uh, I'm, I'm not worried. I think we have uh, some of the best professionals in the world, be Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, who have dealt and have, have experienced these sort of events throughout their lives and their career, and I think they'll act accordingly. And I think at the end of the day, uh, North Korea will understand um, what they're dealing with, and they're not willing to risk the regime over it at the end of the day, which is everything their policy and their strategies uh, focus on. How do they maintain the, the viability and stability of their own regime? ABC News military analyst from Abu Dhabi, Admiral Robert Harwood. Uh, Admiral, thank you for your time. Thank you.